Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hello. I would like mm -hmm. to welcome you all for this second session for the WESET conference talking to this year about the online learning during the COVID-19 uh, uh, situation. During the session, we'll be having three speakers. Uh, the first speaker will be Professor uh, Manuel, uh, who is director of the business development um, at uh, Cambridge Education Group. Yes. Uh, great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. So let me share my screen. Okay. Can I just check that you can all see my presentation? Perfect. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you, uh, Dr. Angie, for a very kind introduction and Professor Alam uh, for organizing another excellent event. Uh, in, in these times uh, that we're living through, through a crisis, it's more important than ever that we all share good practice. So it's, it's really good to be here and, and, and excellent to see such uh, good participation from across the globe. Uh, really pleased to be here on this panel with Dr. Rawat Hamad and Dr. Sima Joshi. Um, I, I've known both of them uh, for quite some time, particularly Dr. Rawat. Uh, I've known him very long time. So it's really great to be here with them today. Um, and thank you so much for inviting me um, here. My presentation, I will try to stick to the 15 minutes, uh, although as we all know, academics always have got trouble sticking with time, but I will do my best. Um, my presentation is about how we are moving from the crisis that we were faced with uh, at universities earlier this year onto a more sustainable way of doing it, because by now it's becoming clear uh, uh, that this crisis is going to stay with us for quite some time. Um, we don't know how long yet, but it's going to be longer than everybody expected at the beginning of this year. So how do we move on to a more sustainable mode? Um, for those of you who already uh, know me, um, I work at Cambridge Education Group here in the UK. Um, um, I have worked at, at different universities uh, over 20 years. Um, in, in Europe, in the UK, in Spain, uh, in Austria. And uh, all of my work is about online and distance learning and flexible learning. Um, my current work is all of our online programs of study. Uh, but I will focus a bit more today on what universities have been doing for their campus courses and how technology has been helping them and what things can we think about uh, for the future in terms of providing a better learning experience. Uh, for our students. A very quick um, overview of what we do at Cambridge Education Group, very, very brief, just to give you an idea of the context where I'm coming from here. Uh, we develop partnerships with universities and we help those universities to develop online programs of study uh, who are accessible all over the world. So, so what we do is online education uh, and students can join from anywhere. and. Uh, our uh, take on online education is actually that online education should be just as good, if not better, than face-to-face -face, uh, education. We don't believe the online learning should be a kind of a, a, a lower uh, rate of quality to what you would experience of campus. So we pay a lot of attention to how we design our courses and the learning experience uh, of our students to make sure uh, uh, that the education they're getting is of the highest quality possible. Uh, we now have got, uh, uh, across all our partnerships and our courses, we've got a larger postgraduate population than, than 90 UK universities. So it's a very large operation. Now we have got uh, students from over 75 different countries on our courses, uh, and we have got very high retention rates, over so 90%. That's important because it means that the learning experience is working for the students. We retain most of the students who come to these courses. So it, it is doable, it can be done. High quality online learning is possible, but you need to pay a lot of attention to design. So that's a quick overview about us. Uh, as I said before, the main uh, uh, focus of, of this presentation today for me is about uh, the crisis that we have been living through at universities and how those campus courses are coping with that. So during this, uh, the academic year that just ended, so academic year 2019 to 2020, we were hit by the, by the pandemic, 
uh, right across the world. Uh, the UK, the same as, uh, as others, they suddenly around here in the UK, around March, April time, all university campuses had to close. Um, all students had to go home and the delivery of campus courses had to be very quickly moved to an online scenario. Uh, according to the UNESCO figures, uh, over 1 billion learners' education got disrupted across the world uh, during the academic year 2019 to 2020. Uh, so it, that is a sovereign, uh, sizable figure. We all know how important education is uh, for young people, for developing our countries, for developing our societies. So when we have a situation where 1 billion learners got their education uh, disrupted. This is a very serious problem uh, for the world and something we need to pay attention to uh, because of the importance uh, of education. So all you have there on the screen is, you know, what would very often happen in a campus. You have got a lecture theater where a lecture is, is delivered and all of that very quickly had to be moved online uh, because uh, students were not able to attend campus anymore. Uh, so that was the, the, what I call the crisis mode, just very quickly, let's move um, the, the, the communication that used to happen face to face, let's move it online. Um, so out of that, uh, and there were a few months where that was done, and, and a few months then in the summer when universities had time to think about how they're going to enter the new academic year, so out of that, I think a lot of confusion has been generated. I keep hearing people talking about hybrid learning uh, and talking about blended learning and some of them hybrid or blended as almost as if they are the same thing. Uh, now, for me, uh, uh, there is a very clear distinction between the two. So blended learning uh, is a learning experience where some things happen in a context, let's say face-to-face, -face, and some other part of the learning experience happens somewhere else, for example, online. So a blended learning experience is an experience that was designed to happen in two different environments. And it was designed as such. It was a conceptual mode of design. That's one thing. Hybrid learning, however, is when you deliver one learning experience that was designed as one context and people access it from different places. So for example, if you're delivering a lecture in a lecture theater and you have got students with you there in that lecture theater, but at the same time, you have got some students attending uh, online because that lecture is being broadcast. So that would be a hybrid learning experience. They're two very different things. And so I think we need to be kind of clear about what is it that, that we are offering to the students so, uh, and I think one of the problems here for many institutions has been the assumption that they made. So uh, earlier in the summer, many institutions were uh, assuming that the campus would reopen almost kind of as normal uh, uh, and some face-to-face -face will be delivered within the constraints of the health and safety that we need to put into a uh, 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 spaces at the moment, and all of that will be supported with technology. So that was the assumption. Now, what is the problem with that assumption? That the reality is that we're facing with at the moment is that uh, COVID-19 infection uh, is a spiking again, right across the world. Here in Europe, it's getting uh, uh, very serious indeed at the moment, and in the UK as well, uh, which means there have already been a number of halls of residence locked down when the students have to stay in the halls of residence. And that planning for face-to-face -to -face tuition that was going to happen on campus has or is being rethink, rethought at the moment. Uh, uh, people are looking at, you know, is this viable? Well, we had assumed we were going to be able to do this, uh, particularly this time between, you know, September and, and, and December. Is that viable? Is that going to happen? Um, so the outcome uh, um, that I'm, I'm kind of concerned about is that we're going to end up with more crisis mode delivery because what we have to deliver to students this academic year is not what we were planning for um, because we had planned, we had assumed there's an, an, a certain element of face-to-face -face that was going to be possible and that is looking like it's going to be a lot less than what was assumed. So we're entering, we're kind of carrying on with that crisis mode where we have designed a learning experience that we are not going to be able to deliver in the way it was designed. 
uh, uh, to be delivered. Uh, so that is the, the problem I think we're facing uh, at the moment, that what was designed to be delivered to students is not what they are getting. And we're, we're risking a number of things. If we continue this crisis mode um, over a long period of time, we're, we're risking a number of things. The first one is that online learning is going to be a, a, even more defined as, well, this, this just doesn't work. Uh, well, it doesn't work when you don't design the experience, when you have designed the experience to be delivered face to face and then you suddenly you move it online. That's when it doesn't work. Um, Another thing we're risking is the perception from students that they're not getting uh, the support that they need. Um, because earlier on this year, when crisis hit the world, everybody was under the understanding, well, this is emergency, we're moving things quickly. The students, had, you know, the students were very understanding of that there were no alternatives, that this had to happen. However, now the students are probably gonna start thinking, well, why are we not getting something better? Why has this been not planned better? So we need to start thinking about that. And I talked to a lot of colleagues uh, across the sector about what is possible, what is doable, uh, um, uh, because you know it is difficult. We're in the middle of a crisis. And my advice is always, well, we need to go back to the principles. This is about learning design. Uh, this is not about uh, if I'm talking to you face to face, I can just do that on the phone or I can do that on Zoom. This is about learning design. What is the experience that we are designing for our students? And I think a very good model that I, I always start my thinking with is the one by Professor Diana Lorillard. Uh, she's one of the world experts in, in learning design. It's not just about online learning, it's about learning design in general for higher education. Um, Professor Diana Lorilla currently uh, uh, works at the Institute of Education uh, here in the UK. And in 2012, uh, she published a, a very important book uh, called Teaching as a Design Science, where she argues that we should be putting in place a conversation framework when we're designing our learning experiences for our students. And she argues, and I think this is really crucial, that learning in higher education is much about acquiring ways of seeing the world. When we get our students, uh, they are adults already. Some of them very young adults, some of them much older adults, but they are adults. So they have got quite a lot of intellectual capacity that they come to us with, and they are very well prepared, most of them, and they're very motivated. So I think one of the key roles of higher education is actually giving them the strategies and the skills to be able to see the world in different ways. That's one of the most important things you learn uh, at university. And this idea of a, a, a conversational learning design framework really aids that type of development. Uh, we need to think about discussion, adaptation, interaction, reflection. Those are the, the, the real concepts that drive learning in higher education. And why is this important in the crisis we're in? Because think about it, if we are moving all those activities that used to happen face to face on campus, uh, we're moving all those activities suddenly onto an online environment where all of that becomes mostly a one way communication between me just pushing things out through a Zoom uh, 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 kind of video conference activity we are taking away all of those really crucial elements, the discussion, the adaptation, the interaction, the reflection, where is that going to happen? If all we're doing is talking uh, through a video camera uh, to an audience of students, when are they gonna reflect on what we are trying to get them to, uh, to think about? When are they gonna interact? When are they gonna adapt those theories that we're pushing onto them? All of that normally happens on campus, uh, when we're discussing things with them. And a lot of those really important elements, they get lost when you simply move this onto a one-way communication uh, on the screen. That's why we need to think about this carefully and how we design the learning experience that we are trying to, uh, uh, to put there for our students. So what would a journey to a sustainable mode look like? Of course, you cannot, in a, in a couple of months, you cannot 
design a course that was meant to be done uh, uh, on campus, you cannot redesign all of that and pro produce a very high quality online learning experience for those students in that short period of time. You cannot do that. And however, if you start by the recognition that face-to-face -face learning and online learning are different, that's the first thing we need to consider as academics. They are different uh, um, learning environments. We cannot just switch from one to the other without making any changes to the design of our courses. Um, what I would always say in terms of when you're moving from face-to-face -to, -face to online, what you need to pay attention to? Structure, 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 structure. That's the first thing that you need to pay attention to because the way people interact with the learning experience when they are at home on their own is very different to the way they interact with the learning experience when they are in campus surrounded by people. It's a very different way of interacting. So you need to design your online learning experience with a very different structure. You need to take into account, particularly in the current circumstances, that students at home will have a number of different pressures on their time. They might be isolating, they might have a restricted physical space. They uh, uh, might know if they are older students, they might have childcare responsibilities with them in the house. So the way in which they interact with their own experience will be different. You cannot stick to the same timetable with the same level of activity that you were uh, planning for uh, uh, when you were on campus. And the other thing that I think is really important uh, when you're moving things online break things up. The depth of engagement, there's plenty of research that's been done on this, and I'm mentioning there one of the latest articles I read by some uh, uh, um, colleagues I know, Padilla and Armelini and Rodriguez. Uh, they just published this paper in 2020, but there is plenty of other research done that the depth of engagement and the effort that the learners put in is always higher if the tasks are smaller. What do I mean by this? What does that mean? So if you are set scheduling a Zoom conference with your students that's going to last for three hours, it means that after half an hour, you're going to probably lose the attention of most of them. And you need to break things up. The shorter and the smaller the task, the more depth of engagement that you're going to get with your students. So those are the two top tips, structure and breaking things up. Let's start by that. Obviously, there's a lot more that we could cover, but I only have got um, 15 minutes. I want to leave you with a quote. People ask me, does this online learning really works? It does. Uh, and I leave you with a quote from one of our students, um, Jenny Bennett. She's doing a, an MSc in, in dementia uh, with Hull University. We work with Hull University. And um, during this crisis, Jenny works in the care sector. Uh, she's a mature student and she's doing this MSc part time. And during this crisis, there were all sorts of things that were happening to her at work in her family life. However, when we asked her, tell us about the course, is this working for you still? And that's her quote. She said, the course is fantastic. I'm learning so much. The structure, weekly learning activities really make you question what you read and see. And I point that out because I, I told you about how important structure is. Even the students realize how important that is when you they're getting an online learning experience that has been designed well for them. Okay, that's uh, all I have time for. I think I've only run out by, well, by about one minute. I'm really happy to be here, more than happy to answer your questions during the question and answer session a little bit later, or indeed you can contact me by email and I'll be happy to be in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Manuel, for this uh, very interesting presentation and very interesting topic. Please remember, if we all help and do a little bit, it will make a big difference.